verse 12. And had a wall, great and high, and had 12 gates, and the gates, and at the gates, 12 angels, the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he had taught with me he had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lie four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall, as it was of jasper, and the city was of pure gold, like unto clear glass. So we've all heard that. Hey, brother, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, so there's the city of gold that we hear about all the time. We're getting in good now, brother. We're in the last of the last, of the, last two chapters. Uh, and we're running through this city because this city don't mean a lot to me. It might mean a lot to you, and it might mean a lot to a lot of Christians. That's, that, them streets of gold, man, that don't mean nothing to me. I don't have gold now. I care nothing about no gold uh, or nothing else like that. And that. Pearl, all that them ornaments and jewels and all the stuff we're about to read, that don't appeal to me. I get more enjoyment looking at the trees than I do something shiny. Uh, I, I like looking at the rocks more than I do something brand new and something that we made, something that we didn't make. And this is all going to be stuff that we didn't make, and it's going to be something else. It's going to be something to see. Uh, my God just don't do nothing halfway. <laughs> and I mean, when he builds him a city, he's going to show out. And I mean, it's going to be something. I've seen some recreation pictures of the old temple. I think the one Solomon built, I think it was something else, man. It's something we probably would struggle building now in this day and time. It probably bankrupts a lot of the countries on this, this planet to try to build something. It was unbelievable. And I'm sure this is going to be the sun. Uh, verse 19. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth uh, sardis, the seventh crystallite, the eighth barrel, the ninth, a topaz. The tenth, a chrysophilus. I don't even know what that is. The eleventh, a adjacent. And the twelfth, an amethyst. Some of those precious stones I've heard of, some of them I hadn't. Some of them I'm sure they use those names and we got other names now. I didn't hear ruby or emerald or uh, things that we have that we call precious stones. But I'm sure some of these are they're represented in here. Uh, 21. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was of pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I can't even imagine gold that's transparent. But it's going to be something to see. It's going to be something to see. Uh, a gate the size, a pearl the size of a gate. Now a gate's gonna be way bigger than two doors I'm looking at back there. That's a big pearl. I don't even know the value of that. I know pearls are valuable. I have no idea how much a pearl costs. But one that size right there, there's no telling. I mean, there's no telling the dollar value that would be on something. Uh, don't they come from oysters, right? Uh, I'd like to see the oyster. <laughs> He's bigger than our church, you know. That would be something else. Uh, but there it's going to be. 
uh, 22. And I saw no temple there, therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. They're the church. You don't come in here no more. You go see Jesus. You don't come in here no more. You ain't got to come in here no more. You go see. You go see the Father. It's like uh, this afternoon we're going to my mom cook fish, and uh, uh, that's what it's gonna feel. That's what it's gonna feel like when we get there. And we won't be coming here. We'll be going to his house. We'll be going to we'll be going to Dad's house. We're going to our brother's house. I gotta go see Jesus. What are you doing tomorrow? I gotta go see Jesus. I'm going to see Jesus. Um, Lord have mercy. What a what a what a what a deal. What a deal. If we're believing in him, we get to be with him forever. Take your breath. Here we are, hey, nine people. We got room for 75. We got nine. Don't nobody want the deal. I heard a, a car deal on the radio coming over here this morning. It almost made me sick. I said, if that guy run that line on me, I'd hit him. He's stealing from me and telling me it's a great deal. He's giving me something I already got, charging me for it, and then going to make me come to his shop and get extra work done so I can keep the deal I already got. I would have knocked him out. I would have said, do I look that stupid? I can't believe he's doing it on the radio. Is that what you're saying, Grandpa? Yes, because it infuriated him. I was like, man, I'm, I'm, everybody that heard that, your intelligence just got insulted. I don't know whether you know it or not, but I do. Nobody could fall for that deal. I was like, that's the stupidest deal I've ever heard of in history. And he's advertising it on the radio. I bet he's got people calling right now. Hey, sign me up for that deal. <laughs> I got some extra money I want to give you, man. Holy, poor we. I can't believe people get away with that. And I was like, well, yeah, I would, never, I would never buy anything from that man because I can't believe a word he said. Here's your contract, Max. I don't know if it's a contract or not. <laughs> I don't know what I'm signing. I might be signing his trash receipt or something. Uh, I wouldn't believe nothing he told me after hearing that deal. Wow. Um, but there will be no need for a temple. We'll have the Lord. We'll have the Lord. We come here to worship the Lord. We come here to praise the Lord. We come here to to his house to show him respect and let him know you're important enough to me to stop what I'm doing and come to your house. You're the most important thing I got to do this morning. You are my appointment this morning, Lord, not, not my business, not this, not that, not the other. But when we get there, we're going to, he's going to be, we're going to go see him. We come to see him now, but we just don't get to see him. We don't get to see him. We don't get to see him, we don't get to touch him, we don't get to see his face, we don't get to be with him. Just like we're with each other. We we'll be the same thing. 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the life thereof. Don't need no sunshine. We will have the glory of God to light the way. Now do I understand that? No. But well, we're going to be in the spirit. We're not going to be in the flesh. Spirits don't have to have light to see. <laughs> God can see quite well before he said let there be light. He knew what everything was and where it was. And he didn't need light to be perfect. And he didn't need light to be holy. And he didn't need light to be righteous. He made that for us. When we 
have him, we won't need it no more. Don't need the light no more. Never be in the dark. Never be in the dark. I went to the woods yesterday and neglected to take my flashlight. Rookie mistake, boy. You think I was 13, just went hunting the first time. You got your bullets. <laughs> you get your gun. Might as well, you know, you get your knife, your flashlight, your gun, your bullets. Uh, kind of a wasted trip. Um, but there's going to come a day we don't need no light no more. I don't need no light to see. Um, and, and just the emptiness of this church tells me that, that we have, look at the sunshine out there today. And uh, this community and uh, middle Georgia and Georgia in general and our country is just blind to the back. Sunshine is just as bright as Twenty-four, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, the city, and God, the glory of God, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. All the saved people, all the believers, be coming that way. The gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Open my all the time. I need to go see God now. Okay. There he is. <laughs> Be just as simple as get up out of the bed, walk down the hall, knock on the door. There he is. There he is. How does uh, uh, Jesus put it? In my Father's house are many mansions. It's all in one house. We all going to be in one house, one big happy family. It's like the walls. Good night, Ann. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Jack. Good night, Jesus. Good night, Father. Good night, Holy Spirit. Good night, Paul. Good night, Peter. Good night, John. Well, maybe not, because you just said, don't never get dark, so we won't never lay down. We'll never get tired. But now that is, is a glory. Well, I'd look forward to that. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, where else it should go, to God. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. And they which are written, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. You want to go to heaven? Trust in Jesus Christ. Ask him to be your Savior. And they get your name in that book. You want to go to hell? Just keep doing whatever you do. That's the recipe right there. The Lamb's book of life. And like I said, uh, and I, I keep trying to reiterate and, and lies in this list, says anything that defileth, neither that I mean that's sin. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. And, and there are some sins worse than others, because they're called abominations in this book. Or make it a lie. That lies on that list. It's on there with abomination. All right, now, like I said before, that don't rule out a lot of people. Unless your name is in that book. <laughs> Unless God sees Jesus when you come to judgment. If he sees you, you're in trouble. So I promise you, everybody that steps up there just about, like I said, I'd have a hard time believing somebody that lived a whole life, a life and not told a mistruth. And I'm not talking about telling somebody something that you think is true when it's not. That's just being ignorant. That's 
not trying to deceive somebody. But if I know the truth, and then I tell you something other than the truth, brother, I am lying to you, and I am being deceitful. And there's a reason behind it, and it's probably a dog. Probably. Not always. Sometimes it's other stuff. But it's probably money. Um, I imagine people have lied about money more than anything else. Anything else. And you can have a hard time proving that, but I believe it. Chapter 22, and this is the last chapter in the Bible. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. You know, I've always pictured the tree of life as the cross. I believe back in Genesis when God said he planted the tree of life and put those cherubims to guard it that he was talking about, that cross right there. And I wouldn't be surprised when we get to heaven if there are any crosses up there bearing fruit. Not regular trees, trees like that right there. God can make a tree pop out of them dead boards right there just like he can in living trees outside. And you get a different fruit every month. How about that? Same tree. What a, what a bargain. Get pecans one month, peaches the next, plums the next, right on down the line. These, uh, the, and it says the leaves of the tree, so that's, that, that takes my cross out of it. Uh, the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And uh, I think this is when we're all in heaven and them other ones, they're going to need healing. The ones that can't get through the pearly gate. Verse 3, and there shall be no more curse. This curse God put on us back in uh, Genesis chapter 3, I think. Follow man. Curse the ground. So as hard as Brother James works in his garden, and as good a crop as it get, it ain't as good as it should have been. It ain't as good as it could have been if we hadn't seen it. It ain't the way God set it up to be. It's not the Garden of Eden. It's not as good as it's supposed to be. It's not as good as God intended it to be. It's not as good as God's going to have it be one day. But, he said, and he said, you get it out of the sweat of your brow, Mr. Brother. That ogre didn't just pop up out of the ground, did it? You got to work for it. That was part of that curse. Uh, before we fail, you could just stroll around and eat. Don't know that you had to eat. Don't know that you needed to eat. Don't know that you ever had an appetite for food. You just run from God. That kind of energy. You didn't need no food in it. And then we fail. And if he curses the ground, everything we eat comes out of the ground. So, well, cows don't come out of the ground. You know, they the hay that comes out of the ground. They the grass that comes out of the ground. Everything they eat comes out of the ground. <coughs> and so you are what you eat. And there was no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. That's us. Now that tells me we're not just going to be sitting up there in hammocks. And taking it easy. I ain't never liked that idea of heaven. That 
don't sound like me, man. That sounds like some retirement home. Uh, people just sitting around in rocking chairs. That ain't me. That ain't me. Now, one day that might be all I'm able to do, but that still ain't me. And, and just being in heaven and, and having it made and not having nothing to do, I mean, I don't see that. I'm going to be serving the Lord somehow or another. And, and, and that means I'm going to have a job. He's got a job picked out for me. And for once in my life, I'm going to be able to go in every day and I'm going to know exactly what that employer, my Lord, wants me to do. And it's going to be crystal clear to me. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it as good as I can do it. And it's going to be perfect. Because I'm giving it to somebody that's perfect. I'm doing it for somebody that's perfect. So my work has got to be perfect. And I'll enjoy that. I'll enjoy that. I'm doing something. I'm being meaningful. To the one that got me there. To the one that kept me from going to the second day. To the one that paid for my sin. Verse 4. This is one of my favorites. And they shall see his face. We saw, you know, all these pictures we see of Jesus. <laughs> this chosen movie, I like the way that guy talks. He sounds like I think Jesus would talk. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I imagine Jesus was speaking Hebrew most of the time, so I wouldn't understand the word he said. But they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Can you imagine looking on the face of Jesus? Now that's something you can just stop and sit and think on from now until the time he comes back and gets it. Just looking at it. I think that that's the, the nations more than it is us. I think that's, uh, it said, you know, that uh, just two verses ahead of that, that those leaves were for the healing of the nations. Um, and at the end of that next verse, it said, his servants shall, shall serve him. I'm counting myself as a servant, but God's going to count me as a son. Jesus is going to count me as a brother. Jesus is going to count me as a co heir God is going to count me as an heir to the kingdom, not a servant. you got to remember the verses that tell you your royalty, too. I have a hard time with that. I don't, I don't consider myself royalty. <laughs> That's just not... And the, the social ladder I've never cared about. So being on the high end of that, I don't, I don't care about. But I believe that uh, when those nations, they're going to see his face. And his name will be in their foreheads, they'll know. They'll know. And I think that's just knowing. You know, when you know something, you know. I see you, Sister Susan, sitting there. And I hug you this morning. And I'm talking to you. I know you're in this room. There's no doubt in my mind that you're in this room. I know that. It's, it's in there. And anybody that come in here questioning me about that would have a hard time. Especially by right, so they're sitting right there. That's proof number one. Everybody else in here has seen them and hugged them. That's proof number two. We've talked to them. We can tell you what we said. So either you're crazy or all of us are crazy. And I believe it's just the fact that, you know, it's the same thing that has when, he, when everybody comes before judgment. The non-believers ain't non-believers no more. <laughs> He's got you stretched out there in the middle of nowhere, brother, and you ain't standing on nothing, and you can't see nothing in no direction. He's 
asking you questions. You know who's in charge. And he's sitting right there looking. And that's the one with the eyes of flame of fire. And you're going you're gonna to not believe him then? I don't think so. I think all unbelief disappears at that moment. You believe. And I've, I've also always said since I, he, he opened my eyes that, that I know that when I got to that point now, <coughs> I would said, oh, I, I messed up. I messed up. Oh, I messed up bad. It's the worst mistake we ever made, Max. This is going to be a bad one. Um, verse 5, and again, there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. That's it. Lord God's going to be the boss, and we're right there with him. Now, you can't be a boss if there ain't folks to be boss over. All those, uh, um, And I believe God's going to tell us all, once we get to heaven, to be fruitful, multiply, and fill up the universe. Why would he make something so big? He, he told us in the beginning, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Okay, well now we're in the spirit. We're going to fill the universe. And guess what? It's still getting bigger. We're way bigger, real quick, all the time, according to the scientists. So, the, 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 the main thing to keep in mind, people, uh, and, and, and I've said this before in here because it, it's happened to me, you can get heavily minded and just be worthless. Man, I'm going to hell. Nothing matters. I don't care. I don't care if I lose my job. I don't care if I pay my life bill. I don't care what happens. I'm going to hell. I know Jesus. Jesus knows me. He's going to let me into heaven. And I'm going to be the good as I can be between now and then. And I don't care about none of this no more. But that ain't the way the Lord wants us to be. We're worthless. If when, we, when we get like that, we're worthless. We're worthless. We're setting a bad example. Um, and, and, and how many people is that going to lead to Jesus? Don't worry about you having faith. Don't worry about your life. Are you going to heaven one day? What you worry about that stuff for? Live under the bridge. It ain't gonna hurt you. You ain't gonna be down there long. You going to heaven? You gonna live in a mansion one day? You see how many people you get to sign up for that right there? Probably not many. Um, verse six. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God, the holy prophet, sent his angel to show unto his servants. The things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Uh, Jesus uh, told this to John uh, right at 2,000 years ago now. And what he said, he said, Behold, I come quickly. It's been 2,000 years. Now that's God. So, can't say he's not telling the truth. He, he said, I come quick, but to me it's going to be like that. But to y'all, it's going to be a couple thousand years. I need y'all to take care of some stuff before I come. I'm waiting on y'all to do what I need you to do before I come. I think that's what it is now. I think he's waiting on us to get as many people saved as he needs saved. And then, that's going to be that. Uh, verse 8, And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. How many times do people in this book fall down in front of an angel? And every time they say, Uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh -uh yeah. Get up, get up. God's gonna get mad at you. You better get up from there. Don't you get him mad at me. And I like this one actually filled in. 
He says, uh, I am thy fellow servant. One day that angel that can destroy the state of Georgia just by snapping his fingers is going to be my fellow servant. I'm going to 